Um, going back to Pittsburgh, you would find, you know, I'm sure you've heard plenty of the stories about the, the, the hobos and the yards and things like that. I wish my grandfather was still alive because he worked on the B&O uh, for 40 years and he would have had stories to tell. Oh, I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. It's, it's really a very rich kind of place. Other questions, observations, or comments? I was just going to say that, you know, I've, I don't remember if you knew I worked for a while at the Avalanche Bar. It yes. used to be across from Marquette. And um, they had two clientels, the college students, but that wasn't until after 10.30 uh, at night. They came from the library. Before that, they had street people all day long, yeah, elderly, retired, or... Uh, and many of them, they would leave by 8 or 9 o'clock, and, and because it was a very crowded bar, the students, I mean, during the winter, they would drink a lot, and they would lose hats and mittens and mufflers, you know, things, scarves. And they kept a big box where they would throw, all the bartenders would just, you know, stuff was left there at the end of the night. They'd throw it in the box, and people could come, like the lost and found, and look. But the homeless people would come, and apparently the homeless people, I learned this from the bartender Mark, who was on during the time they were in the bar, um, he, I remember he looked, he yelled at one guy, uh, apparently the homeless people would decide if they could manage the money to buy a bottle of wine. Then they would not go to sleep in the homeless shelters, uh, because you can't be intoxicated. So, um, and he would yell out, I was going to say, this is a, a verbal sign, it's not a written sign, but he, he yelled out, Flaherty, are you UTB? And, um... He said, come on over here, take a mitten, take some mittens. And UTB, I found him under the bridge. That meant that's where he was going to sleep that night. It was 20 below, too. But he was going to do it. But uh, it's interesting how that, I mean, UTB, I never heard. I mean, I yeah. wouldn't uh, know that. But, uh, yeah, I, I think there, you know, um, there were certainly were kind of phrases that people would call, you know, so a, a railroad worker would, you know, the, the, the muscle uh, who would kind of keep the trains clear were bulls. And um, there's, there's quite, a, a, quite a bit of, you know, um, uh, sort of code names for things as well, not only with the images, but uh, they're certainly out there. Thank you so much. Anybody have any, any other questions, comments? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a great one. <laughs> well, thank you for coming. Um, and I, I just want to say that uh, it was a wonderful reading. Uh, the room here was crowded with the souls of 10,000 hobos. It took them about 10 minutes to get out of here. But they were listening. It was six or seven of them were back in the corner. They weren't listening. But um, they were talking about you know, what they were talking about. The rest of them were here. I, I kept listening to everything they said. Thank you so much, Pat. Uh, and if people are interested, I do have copies of the book for sale. I'm more than happy to uh, share those.